All right, guys. So I'm going to be I'm going to be asking them a bunch of different questions, and I'm going to kind of lead the discussion. I do want you guys to be involved. I'm going to take some questions from you guys as well. But I wanted to start with you guys. Um, this is something that's of particular interest to me because my story was a little bit weird. Um, so I want to know each of you. How did you find your way into art? How did your story begin? So John, why don't you, since you're on my right here, why don't you get started? How did I How did I get started yeah. as far as the career stuff? Whatever you want, man. You can take it whatever direction you want. That, if we start from the beginning, that's going to be awful for everybody, it's, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the womb. I'm going to cut that frame down here. Yeah, so sure. um, the very short version is go to architecture school, have no formal art training, um, get pressured. The reason with, for the architecture school bit, just in short, is because got some scholarships coming out of high school, and parents didn't like the idea of an art degree because it's not stable. Mm. And so they yeah, want a professional too. degree, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think some of you, raise your hand in the audience if you've faced, there you go, I'm not alone, oh, yeah. see? Um, but then look at us, we're up here, and yeah. I, I think it's somewhat stable. It's always it's a little a, unstable. Yeah, you know. Anyway, so we get an architecture, architecture degree, um, <clears throat> And we don't have any formal art training, but we've loved comics from the word go, right? That's me. I'm a comics guy from the word go. I'm a science fiction fantasy guy from the word go. Um, I, the piece of advice I'll impart here, more than just talking about my own journey, is to say, uh, for those of you that are trying to sort of break into the business or starting your, your path toward being a pro, look at what you like, look at what you love, and you may be forced to do some things you don't like or like, but the sooner you can get into the things you love or define the things that you love, the better. Mm -hmm. I knew I liked architecture. I knew I could make a lot of money at architecture, but I didn't really care about making a lot of money in architecture. I wanted to be drawing and creating and concepting in the science fiction, fantasy, and comics world. And the, the, it took most of my 20s to get there. Um, but by 26, I got my first book cover gig. But it wasn't until I was 31, hello, late bloomers out there, or people who were beating yourself up about being a little older than what you'd like and trying to find your path. I wasn't uh, full-time kicking architecture to the curb until I'm 31. It was April 26, 2001. I still remember that date. And so uh, ever since then, I've been completely full-time doing this. I'd say the first three or four years were very, very hand-to-mouth. I, I think yeah. we kind of all probably on this panel yeah. have been mm -hmm. through that. Um, but just have a strong stomach and believe in yourself and keep building your relationships and you will find your way, okay? So that's the short version. I want to pass the ball off to the, the rest of the team. That was great. Awesome, thanks. Yeah. Go ahead, you're up yours. Well, yeah, mine uh, started out at the forbidden section of my local library, actually. I was seven oh. years old, <laughs> yeah, and I uh, found myself in the forbidden section. Uh, which was the yeah, which was the grown-up section, but you know, forbidden section sounds so much more fun. Um, and I found fairies by Brian Froud and Ellen Lee, and I was like, oh my god, this is a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be an artist. And you know, I didn't have the parents saying ah, that's not a stable job. It was more of a, they knew there was no way of getting me from that idea. Mm. And uh, I, long story short, went to art art school. Um, and that's where they crushed my dreams. Really? Because well, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah. they were looking at my work and it's, oh, that's fantasy. That's not art. And I was like, okay, I'm not giving up this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, decided to study graphic design because I wanted to have a stable uh, day job. And I decided just to do it on my own time and uh, gather as much information as I could around me. Back then, there was no much, not, not really internet or whatever. So I, I, I just figured things out. Um, took me 16 years, actually, to get there. Uh, had a lot of failures. I, I had a lot of no's. I restarted my career many, many times. Um, and actually, when I was 37, I thought about quitting altogether. Uh, lost the love for art completely because I was trying to fit in and my style was just not, you know, nobody was picking up on it. It was like, ah, it's not like this, it's not like that, you're not doing digital. You, Basically, the only thing I heard was, you suck. Oh. And then it was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back to that seven-year-old girl and do art I wanna do, because, you know, I'm in it for the long run. I wanna be 111. So, I'm, I, I, oh, you really? know, oh yeah. <laughs> So my birthday is actually my death day as well. So you're all invited. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to invite Tom Hiddleston. Whether he's still alive or not, he's there. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, 
dream big. But anyway, um, I started doing my own thing again, and I started doing mermaid and June Fay uh, hashtags and Instagram. And all of a sudden, from a measly 600 followers, I grew to 10,000, 30,000, 70,000, and so on. And um, yeah, this, this book was born, Fairies of the Fold Lines. And hey presto, talk about labor boomers. Mm -hmm. 37 mm -hmm. years old, mm -hmm. and I met Brian Froud. He wrote my intro. Last year I was celebrating Christmas with him and Alan Lee. That's awesome, that's awesome. There's that's always awesome. time. Awesome. So that's my story. Wow. That's super cool. <laughs> Go ahead, Camille. All right. Um, so I, my parents, they, they didn't want me to be an artist. They knew I was going to be, but they're also like, you know, it, they're Italian immigrants. They're like, no, you know, you gotta, you're like, we don't want you to be a starving artist. But so I grew up thinking I was going to be a paleontologist because I love dinosaurs. Oh, so I was like drawing yeah. dinosaurs <laughs> constantly. And then I learned that's not a job. Like you actually have to go and dig stuff. And if you've seen me, I'm the color of like, like raw mozzarella. <laughs> so I would literally die in the desert. So I'm like, okay, let's rethink this. Um, I thought about being a Top Gun pilot, but I'm too short. And then, <laughs> then I saw The Little Mermaid and I fell in love with Eric. And I was like, oh my gosh, people can, this is a job, you can draw hot guys and mermaids. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is my thing. Um, so sadly for me, I'm a terrible animator. I went to animation school and I was awful. So, but um, I, because, so I'm a comic book artist, but I'm also a painter. And the way I got to that is a very bizarre story. So in high school, I was like, no, I'm gonna be an animator. You know, I'm like gearing up for it. And then my best friend has this major crush on this guy named Romeo. Now. No. I don't know about you, but I don't think that was his real name. Um, she's like, you know what? He's a comic. He's a writer. And he wants to do a comic book. You, you can draw stuff like that. I'm like, no. Like, I'm drawing dragons and spandex. Like, I don't think this is my thing. Um, so, but I was like, you know, a good. I was a good girlfriend, so I dropped. You know, I fell on that grenade. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So I, I, I worked with him on a comic book so she could get closer to him. Wow. Um, it didn't work out, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> So then uh, I did animation school and I wasn't good at it. So then I just re reassessed things. Because you know, in life you have to try. Like you have to go through it. And then like you said, you reinvent yourself. You know, mm -hmm. you get different careers. And mm -hmm. so I went into uh, art school and I had that too where they were like, You're, this isn't art. Because I was doing manga stuff. Because then Sailor Moon hit. And I saw a tuxedo mask, I'm like, damn. So that's when I switched from North American spandex heroes to um, <laughs> anime rose throwing heroes. And uh, so I, I got into that and I didn't let people tell me that I wasn't a good artist. I was like, you know what, I'm an obstinate Italian. You tell me I can't do something, that's all I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. So I, I literally was doing projects in um, college where they were like, um, we need to uh, create a roadmap. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do a roadmap for, for sperm because you guys are pissing me off and I'm gonna animate it, or not animate, I'm gonna draw it. So I did stuff like that and my teachers were like, I don't know what to do with you. Um, <laughs> and you know, in, in college they told me I wasn't a good painter. And I realized that I wasn't good at painting pointillism. I wasn't good at painting um, sailboats. So it wasn't that I wasn't good at painting, I just wasn't good at painting their style. And that's something that artists have to learn, you know, it's like, what is your style? And as you grow and evolve, that also changes. And then when I graduated, I just blended my love of anime with my love of painting. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and by becoming an artist a painter wasn't actually in my career path. I just wanted to be a comic book artist. Wow. Yeah, but I had done some um, illustrations for ride snowboards. And so there was a gallery in Vancouver and they were doing a snowboard show. So I actually tried to pawn off my snowboards because I was living in a studio apartment and they sent me five snowboards. I'm like, oh my God, this is like the size of my apartment. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the gallery wouldn't take my snowboards, but they took the original art and ended up selling, which is, I never expected the original art to be worth anything because as a comic book artist, I was always like, no, the end product, like the book, that's what matters, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was like a completely life-changing experience when the gallery was like, no, no, like we want your originals. And honestly, I'd been giving them away, like my whole, like up until then, I was just throwing them away. I didn't really have anything to do. I was like, all right, you guys want that? No, okay. Um, and then the gallery was like, do you want to try painting? Like just take 
those drawings you did, but do them in acrylics. And so I was like, well, I was told I wasn't very good, but sure, why not? Let me try it. And then I did, and I had a sellout show. Um, and then I had another solo show, and that sold out. And, and I realized that, oh my gosh, I just wasn't doing what I love to do. I was trying to do something mm -hmm. other people were telling me to do. And you can't do that as an artist. And, and I realized that maybe I'm being a brat, but I'm like, I have one life. This is what I want to do. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? So yeah. that's that's how I got to where I am and just the hustle, right? So just every year pushing and doing more and mm -hmm. eventually, you know, um, publishers like Random House ended up finding me and um, yeah, and so that's where I'm at today. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your, your, teacher, your teachers were assholes. I know, right? <laughs> Those yeah. are terrible teachers. I know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, it's hard, to, I was thinking about how, I'm, how what, what to say. Um, I've based, I grew up with an artist as a father. Um, he was a wildlife artist. Um, and so he always likes to joke that by the time I was five, I could name every single duck. Um, <laughs> and I still actually can, which is sad. That's a life um, No, that's awesome. Hooded McGanzer, canvas oh. back, blue bill, green wing teal, we can go on and on. Um, so, but I was obsessed at drawing um, right away, and I just would draw everything. I had, by the time I was five, I just had sketchbooks filled with like sharks and just whatever, just, just draw, 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 draw. Was into comics and stuff like that. Um, it was because I was with my dad all the time, I just thought that's what you do is you draw stuff, you paint stuff. Um, and, I, but as I got older, I didn't realize that it was like a job. Um, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know what I wanted to do. All I wanted to do, like when when people talked about college, I was like, I'm not going to college. I'm just going to draw stuff. Um, that's basically all I ever did. Is I just want to draw. That's it. Yeah. And um, I, uh, when I was 15, I basically started working professionally. Um, and let's put it this way: I did not have a very good uh, school experience or high school experience because I got picked on a lot and stuff. So it was like drawing was everything. Um, so I didn't have friends because I was in my room drawing all the time. <laughs> um, I would come home from school and just draw and for hours. I'd get my homework done as quick as possible and draw. So when I was about 15, I, uh, well, I, I got into caricature, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was called caricature. I just, don't take this the wrong way, but you all look very funny, okay? <laughs> Everybody does. And I just started drawing how I was feeling and what I, how I was seeing people. And then later my dad told me, oh, this is, it's called, actually what you're doing is called caricature. And he gave me a book and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I, I thought I was making this up. And, um, and so I was doing that all the time, uh, just drawing everybody ev that I saw. And I would walk around the mall and just laugh out, I'd see someone and be like, oh God, <laughs> like I want to draw that person so bad. And like, <laughs> like, you know, I don't know how you can walk with that chin, you know. <laughs> um, so I just like, it just wouldn't turn off. And then, um. I got in trouble in my history class. Um, this teacher just, I kept, I couldn't stop drawing him on my papers because he, you guys remember the, in The Incredibles um, when the teacher that the, the Flash kid has uh, and he's like, he, he put a, he put a oh, thumbtack yeah. on my, that was my teacher, he looked just like that guy. <laughs> and so I kept drawing Mr. Wentz, um, you know, trying to, be Hendrix or whatever, because he was imitate Hendrix for some reason. And um, so I was just doing these drawings. And finally, one day he he, he sees my drawing. And he's like, "That's enough!" <laughs> and he gets he grabbed me like by that side of my hair and just, like pulls me out in the hallway, to drag me down the hallway, brings me to the principal's office, and uh, he, the, he it was a new principal too, and she was from Brooklyn and she was like tough, and, and uh, everyone was afraid of her. But um, she. Uh, She's like, what's the problem? He's like, D he won't stop drawing me. He keeps drawing me, and he makes my head look funny, and, and on and on and on. And she's sitting there like this. She's like, OK. And then um, she's like, well, let me see, and um, I'll, I'll deal with it. So as soon as she, she, uh, he left, she starts dying laughing. <laughs> and, and, and I got my first job right there. She hired me to, to draw uh, nine teachers that were retiring. Oh. Um, and, and that was my punishment. And then. And I was like, whoa, she's paying me to do this? And then I just kept doing it and kept doing it. And then um, I moved to Chicago when I was 18. And I just, I got a, I started working in weird jobs, like t-shirt company. And then I, then I did graphic design for, uh, they liked my artwork and said, oh, you can do graphic design. We'll teach you how to do it at this magazine. And I didn't know how to turn a computer on at the time. Um, and they 
so I did graphic design for a while, but then I just, what, I, what ended up happening was um, I just kept seeing, I started seeing caricature illustration in, like I'd go to, I'd walk to like a Borders bookstore and um, this is, before, there was no Facebook. There was nothing like that you could connect with people or anything. And I would just go to the, the bookstores and I would just flip through everything and I would find, you know, all these artists that just like spoke to me like C.F. Payne and Roberto Prada and just all these like Thomas Fluharty and just all these people that just, I'm like, man, this is exactly what I want to do. And then I started writing them and and I'd just write them and be like, how are you doing this? Like, how, like I want to do this. And and um, most all of them like took me under their wing. Like they just, they would almost sometimes give me assignments and like, yeah, you should work on your hands a little more and stuff like that. And I just kept doing that. And then um, I, for a few years, I was just doing like private commissions. Um, people hiring me to do like a you know draw their dad with their Harley, and I, ugh, you know I, I hate stuff like that. But so I was doing that and drawing people's pets and stuff, and it was just. But I'd spend all week on a pencil drawing that was like super hyper realistic, and I would get like a hundred bucks for it. It was the worst. It was so depressing. But I was like, I didn't know what else to do. Um, and so I just kept doing that, and I had like a side job at the time. And then what ended up happening, sounds really weird, but I went to the bookstore, and I was like, let's look for the worst magazines. And so I started looking for the worst ones, like Cracked Magazine, which is a <laughs> mad ripoff. Um, and then there was this religious magazine. It was a reli religious satire magazine called The Door. It makes no sense. <laughs> but... They were terrible. Like the, the 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 you could tell the quality, like black and white. Everything's black and white. Um, they, they're it's it just everything. So I was like, but they had illustrations in them. So I was I got the idea. Like I should just write the bad magazines, because I'm better than anybody in these magazines. They have to hire me, and it worked. So I started doing covers for like a hundred bucks and two hundred bucks. And uh, inside spot illustrations for forty bucks, and but I was getting published, and I, I had covers, and then I built up like enough of them, and what ended up happening uh, was there's it's I think it's in this book, um, I, I think I probably tell the story a little bit, but the 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 religious satire magazine gave me, um, and I was experimenting too. I was like I, I just like learning and exploring my style too. Like why, why do acrylic with marker and color pencil and watercolor and pen and ink all in one piece. Just whatever it took to make it into something that worked. Um, and I, at that time I started kind of getting into digital a little bit, uh, but I kind of hated digital painting. I didn't think it was real painting. Um, and I just felt like, kind of like I was cheating or something when I first got into it. And so, my friends were like, you got to get into digital painting. And I'm like, ugh, nah. You know? And um, so, because all the artists that I looked up to were oil painters and stuff like that. So, um, so what ended up happening was th that religious ma magazine gave me a, a cover. And it was of, it was of uh, Napoleon Dynamite. And he's like doing like a Last Supper type thing where he's, he's got one hand with a milk, a carton of milk in one hand with a, um, a, a thing of uh, tater tots. So he's just holding it like this. And I was like thinking, man, this would be a great Mad Magazine cover, and which was my dream. And, and I, then I thought to myself, you know what? Even though these people pay me shit, I'm going to, like something snapped in my mind. And I was like, I'm going to put every single thing into this one cover. Uh, it was the first time I got, I got a model to pose for me. I lit them. I went to Chipotle and I took a basket. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> went to the store, bought some tater tots, filled that shit up, got milk carton, uh, pull your jeans up high, because you got to look like, like Napoleon. You know, got the head full. I did all this stuff, got it lit just perfectly, took all these photo references. I had everything I needed to do to, for, you know, in prep. I drew it. I painted it, like my heart on it. And the funniest thing happened was, it, I, it was like a mad cover. It was like, I was like, I did it. I got, I got the quality. And um, I never heard from them again after that. Because yeah. I think they thought, well, see, what happened was, I used that cover for promotion, and my next, the next job I got was Time Magazine. Oh, wow. 
So it like literally just opened the door, that one cover. Um, and then from that point on, I just started building and building and building. So, but yeah, no, they, they never called me back for another job. Yeah. So it's kind of a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome though. Yeah. I think it's like a common theme like that it was kind of a roundabout path for all of you. You guys think that's fair? Yeah. Um, it's not oh, just yeah. a straight line no, like, oh, I wanted to do this. Not. And yeah, it seems like, like that was, uh, that was uh, the case with all of you. Same with me too. Mm -hmm. I now, think I it never is a straight line with art. What's that? Say that again? I think it never is a straight line with right. art. You're right. complete. Every time, uh, every year you're changing. Yeah. So, I, yeah. you know, that's... Absolutely. That's it. And it sounds like all, all of you, too, had that common theme of just, at the beginning, just trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. right? Like, figure it out and, and make it work however you could, and you just kept going. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. I, I had a question for you guys. I wanted to see a show of hands before I ask this next one. Uh, how many people in here would consider themselves a professional? Just raise your hands for me. Okay. Okay, good. So it's, it's kind of like half. It's kind of like half. But, but it's more, more people here would consider themselves not professional, but the... The thing that I always hear everybody talking about all the time is, I, I want to be a professional artist. I want to make it. I want to get there. I want, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of discussion and a lot of talk about that, but nobody ever talks about what happens when you become a professional and the struggles that happen at that point. So the question I have for you guys, and I'll start with you, John, is, uh, is once you, quote, made it or, you know, <laughs> whatever, once you were doing it for a living, what were the struggles after that? So you can tell people that are that are on that path. What are the struggles? I mean, I, I kind of alluded to how many, how many, we got too much. How many hours we, do we have? Yeah, I, I know, sorry. How many at, days? We're already at three o'clock here. Oh, yes. So True. I'll, I'll keep, or it's, we're yes. seven minutes till, so I'll keep it tight. Um, struggles. <clears throat> I mean, you can go on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and see people talking all the time about the struggles, I think. Maybe just as much as talking about the struggles is talking about how you perhaps overcome those. Yeah. That, that might be helpful. Yeah. For the for the audience and maybe so. as well as us, yeah. perhaps, yeah, yeah. you know. I yeah. might learn something here just right now listening to you guys talk about it. Um, I think the struggles are the same whether you're an amateur or a professional, actually. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. And um, the only difference is that as a professional, you, you've you figured out how to overcome those struggles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, something that I heard um, Iris and, and Camila say, and I, I, I want to echo this as well, is, I love the way that they talked about how there came a, sort of a pivot moment when they said, I've had enough and I'm going to do it my way. I, I think that happens for more artists than maybe admit it, mm. where they have sort of a, a breaking point moment. I think there's also sometimes a moment, and conventions like this, uh, events like this can be very valuable for this, where you develop relationships where there's a seed that gets planted at a show like this, and down the road, there, there's, a, there's a person and I'd be curious if the other panelists here have this, or John has this in his career, where there's a, a person who kind of almost knights you. And when I say that, I mean knight as in K-N-I-G-H-T, oh. where they almost sort of say, you can do this, you know this? Yeah. And at the time, you don't actually know that you can do it or even believe that you can do it, but there's someone that kind of says, yeah. you know you've got this, right? And you kind of look at them like, I don't, but they know that you do. And, yeah. and that person almost in a way becomes a lifeline. You don't have to have that person, by the way, to, to be able to quote unquote make it. Um, to, uh, for me, it was Michael Moorcock. It was a fantasy author, pretty massive one actually. And I got to do a book cover for him as my first job. And um, all that, at that point, all I had done were self-published comics. And um, he was the one that kind of said, uh, even though, uh, the way it happened, short version is this. Uh, I went to Mike and I said, hey, here's my ideas for the cover, but I've got some ideas for these interiors. What would you like me to do? And he says, you're the artist, you figure it out. And it was a great way of saying, hey son, you've got the ball. Don't be fumbling it now and handing it back to the rest mm -hmm. of us. This, this job you have is, has power. And handing that power back to someone and saying, what would you like me to do? You're not fulfilling the role of the artist. Now he said in that super cool Mike Moorcock way and said it very pithy and short, but you know, on the car ride home, it made me realize that 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 is there's there's a short road in this career and and it involves burnout and it involves listening to your clients and let me say this listening is good obeying isn't always the best yeah. so listening to the client and listening to where they want to go is great but um what mike kind of taught me in a very short form there was hey um surprise me surprise us take us somewhere we couldn't go by ourselves now i want to take this back to the question so i can hand it off to the team over here but uh as far as problems and struggles, um, I think a big one that we all have is, especially with social media these days, is trying to focus and stay in your own 
lane, so to speak, or define your own lane and not have other people sort of influence you, almost pressurize you into feeling like you've got to respond to how other people are doing well or succeeding or how they're doing and kind of keeping your eye on your own path. I find that with the internet and with online uh, conduits, I think it's harder than it was for me when I started my career to kind of stay on my path and not get unfocused of having to think about all my other peers and how they do their job. I would say for me, that's one I kind of, I still sometimes struggle with. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the solution to it is just stop looking at yeah. social media for me. Uh, I want to hand that off. That yeah. was my problem. That's the thing that I struggle yeah. with. How about you guys? I, I do the same, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to touch up on the night Oh, yeah, uh, idea, because yeah, yeah, um, you, I, I, you'd think that having Brian Froud write your intro and telling you the most amazing things. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. That's pretty but good. That's not my night. Yeah. yeah. My that's night curious. is actually a lady who wrote me an email, um, telling me that I gave her a childhood back. And for me, that's all I ever want to do with people. Like I want to give them something that gives hope and gives something to dream about because we're living in this really dark time it's difficult you have so many things going on i've had a lady uh, telling me that she had went through um, trauma after abuse and this book was her lifeline is it the same this is the same no it was a different lady i get a, that first one how long ago was that that, that was that, um, you gave the childhood back that was three years ago when i started posting my fairies and I started to talk about this and that was a moment like oh my god this is what I need to do and um, I, I've never been in it for the money I don't really care about that you know I want to pay my bills but to make a I difference do care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it you know I, 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 I feel I feel that I yeah yeah that's right that's right I, I for me it's important to I would like a seven-year-old to find my book in the forbidden section and want to become an artist. <laughs> my job is done then. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, you know, more people need to feel what I feel when I'm being, like, when I'm creating. I, it's, it's the most amazing feeling ever. And, uh, yes, I struggle with uh, looking at other people's work and thinking, oh, my God, that's so good. And, yeah. oh, my God, they're only 26 and I'm 40. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know, we're all doing that. It's that thing yeah. of comparing yourself to others, right? Oh, yeah, you, you go can't through on the that. schoolyard yeah. all the way through life. Yeah. But I think yeah. it, as visual it's artists, it. especially in this time, you're constantly yeah. barraged, yeah. right? Uh, or you yeah. barrage yourself. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, you have to oh. be your own thing, yeah. you know. There's, mm -hmm. John Ho uh, once told me, um, just don't look at all those people's, yeah, uh, people's work. Um, yes, there's going to be thousands of people better than you are, thousands. But there's only one Iris mm -hmm. or Iris. Sorry, I need, to, yeah. I need to pronounce my name <laughs> as a I tried, I tried, I'm sorry. <laughs> so having him that set, say that, and I actually still have that printed uh, and hanging above my desk. So I print these it's wonderful cool. quotes and stick them uh, above my desk, which is a really great way of, you know, affirming that, yes, you've got this. Stay yes. focused. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. good motivation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Yeah. Do you guys have anything you want to add or? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, the, just about what in sure. my yeah. struggle. Yeah. yeah. So I actually had a very interesting um, experience in 2011 where I was doing so many gallery shows that um, the galleries would actually tell me, or not tell me, they would suggest what I should be painting. Yeah. yeah, because they were like, well, that's sold. So I had the problem of like what was selling versus what I really wanted to create. And I, I, was, I was pigeonholed, and I was pigeonholed into this <clears throat> position where I could only paint girls with big eyes and animals on their heads, like, because that's what was selling. And the galleries are like, they're a, a certain, like, they're a business, right? Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm trying to cater to them, but I'm also trying to, you know, express myself. But I was finding, like, oh, man, all, all I was seeing in my mind were these girls with melting rainbows coming out of them. But <laughs> I couldn't, I know, don't know why. I don't, I, yeah, I, I'll, I just drink. I don't, like, you know, I'm not on meth or anything. You gotta so let I'm us, like, what is in that drink? You got to let us know what drink know. that yeah. is. So I mean, we can maybe all make too many lucky charms? I don't know. 
Um, so I, I was having this struggle and I was like, you know what, that's it. Like, I don't want to do this anymore because if I can't paint what I want, then like, I'm not happy. And I wasn't happy anymore. And so then Tara McPherson, do you guys know Tara McPherson? Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't, you guys have to, like, she's here at the show and she's incredible. The funny thing is she doesn't remember this conversation we had. I know. Um, but I have to pimp her out because she, she changed my life because in 2011, she said, would you like to show in my gallery? And, uh, and I'm like, well, it's Tara, so yeah, I kind of want to. But then I asked her, I'm like, well, what do you want me to paint? She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you know, what are you looking for? She's like, anything, whatever you want. I'm like, literally, whatever I want? She's like, yeah. I'm like, you, and I'm thinking, okay, this is my last show because I'm gonna do something I've never done before and I'm just gonna like toss the animals out with the bathwater. I'm like, no, I'm gonna completely reinvent myself. And so what's, what actually started from a point of uh, uncreativity, like, you know, I was just dry, I was bone dry, um, birthed my, my rainbow children and it changed my, like, my career completely. And it was one of my most successful shows and people saw in these rainbow children so much emotion and so much of themselves, you know, they would come up to me and they're just like, wow, that, like that, that girl crying rainbows, like, what does that mean? And, and I'm just like, it's liberation, you know? It's just like me finally being able to express myself. And there's one painting I actually keep on my cell phone. It's, um, it's a girl with her chest is open and there's rainbows dripping out. That was actually, I didn't realize it was a self-portrait at the mm -hmm. time because that was me. Um, my heart wasn't in the art anymore and I felt like I was just melting away. Uh, and, and I keep it with me at all times to remind myself to create art from the heart, from the soul. And so that's, that was that m my moment when I was like, what that hurdle, you know, getting past it. So now I paint literally whatever I want. And galleries will still like suggest, and I'm like, yeah, I don't care. I'm like, this is what's going to happen. And, you know, it, whether it's success successful or not, like the fact that I created it for myself, and if someone else can resonate with it, then that's, I, I've succeeded, you know. I don't, I don't worry about selling anymore because I just want to connect with people. So, and, and my, my night was John Buscema. Oh, nice. Yeah, John Buscema. That's I cool. met him when I was 19. So it was quite a while ago. It was uh, a, lot, a while ago. I'm not going to tell my age. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, and he told me, so my mom, who is like five feet and just like a pistol, you know, she's like, she pulled him aside after a panel and she's like, meet my daughter. I'm like, oh God, mom, no. <laughs> like, this is so embarrassing. And she's just like, talk to him. I'm like, oh my God. And so I went up and, you know, he's like, what do you want to be? I'm like, I want to be a comic book artist. And he asked me, he's like, why do you want to be a comic book artist? And I said, well, I love it. Like, I just, it's what I want to do. I love it so much. He's like, that's the answer that I needed to hear. Because art, he's like, if you want to be famous or rich, he's like, try to be an actor. It's easier. And it's yeah. like, he's <laughs> I'm like, way easier. Yeah, way easier, right? He's like, but if you do it because you're passionate about it, that will get you up in the morning. It will keep you up at night when you have a deadline, when you have uh, clients who don't pay you and he's just like that passion is the only thing that's going to keep you going so make sure that that's what it is that's driving you so that was that I, I you know I still I still remember that there's what you like and there's what you love exactly go for what you love you have anything you want to add Jason oh man <laughs> uh, I guess the the only kind of struggle that I really have I think artist I mean it's not when it comes to the art or the, the it's um, like personal, personal things is I wish I had more time for my own art, mm -hmm. but uh, people that aren't making it in the art at all are just like, oh, poor you, you know? <laughs> uh, but I, I really don't hardly ever have a chance to do drawing and painting for myself. I've got three daughters and, uh, you know, a lot of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And I'm really grateful for the illustration work. So, um, but I, you know, I see my oil paints a lot. It's just sitting over there looking at me and like, what are you doing? <laughs> and like, and so I, that drives me nuts. But the, any struggle I really, the main struggle that I find in my line of work, and I don't know about you guys at all, but in illustration, um, edit, like advertisements type stuff I do or whatever, um, the worst part of the whole thing is that they, they call you, and in my case, a lot of times, like for Rolling Stone magazine, for example, um, or time, it doesn't matter. But basically, they give you like one or two days. Like I've gotten one day jobs for Rolling Stone where I got, wow. it's five in the morning till six at night and, and I kill myself to get a painting done. Sometimes I get two or three days to do something. Uh, so the, the deadlines are, it's like, a, it's like a marathon and it's really, really challenging because 
it's got to still be up to my standards and my quality um, because it, that's going to determine whether I get other work again. Um, so that's stressful. But what the struggle is, is then they'll take sometimes three to six months to pay me. And I'm constantly trying, I'm like hounding all my, Time Magazine and different people, getting my agent like, uh, can, have they paid yet? It's like yeah. literally every single job I do, I'm like, every day I check my mailbox. Every day I'm like, oh, I just did like 10 covers and I, uh, empty mailbox every day, yeah. empty mailbox. And it's like, so that's the struggle. And, that, and it sucks. It's, it sucks to be like being stressful financially when I'm actually doing okay. Right. But the money's never there when I need it, and then when it comes, I have to pay all these bills because. Yeah. So it's like it, sometimes it feels like an endless like cycle, and that's my struggle. Mm -hmm. That's and it's like, like I sometimes I'm like, should I just like get a diff like work at Home Depot or something? <laughs> because like this is driving me nuts. Like, let me ask you, man. Do you have, do you own the copyright on on say yeah, what's the percentage? Nine percent. Like. The only magazine that owns anything sure. of mine is Matt. Matt, so not Rolling Stone. No. What no. about putting together a collection? Is that what that is on the end? Is that a collection the, of your stuff? This is a book. Yeah. Okay. So then you've already answered what I was about to say. Then. Yeah. Yeah. No, I put out books and different things like that. Okay. Okay. Um, so you do have your own vehicles for. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, and I, and I, I do like sell prints and stuff like that, but, um, like I wish I had more time to do like oils for Rolling Stone and stuff like that. Yeah. But when you're only paying me $1,500, screw you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just doing it because, for one, it's Rolling Stone, so it's good exposure. Right. And I like music, and it's a, it's a popular magazine. So for me, it's like that's a billboard. That's yeah. the way I look at it. Yeah. Like, when I would do covers for the Village Voice in, the, in, the, in New York, um, they don't pay that well. But guess what? It's on every street in New York City. Yeah. So it's a billboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I, certain jobs like that, I'm like, Man, I can't believe yeah. how terrible they're paying me. But a lot of people will see it, and I'll try to do a good job. Maybe I can enter this into a, an award show and see what happens. So it's that's the worst part about this. It's it's the hounding the payments. Yeah, mm. drives me crazy. I've yeah. actually just refused a lot of clients because of that. I'm just yeah. I'm yeah. not dealing with that shit anymore. I respect myself and my art way mm. too much yeah. Yeah. to it be sucks. doing that because yeah. it's it's so yeah. stressful. Yeah, it's just the way it goes. Yeah, like um, some clients now. Um, I well, if I if it's a client that's uh, like a like a private commission, I always do half up front for that. Yeah. But um, if it's like th through any kind of like editorial magazine, books, whatever, um, like I, I just did a, a um, illustration for Hot Date. Um, it's a, t a Canadian TV show. Um, it's on Pop TV. And, you know, it, it's a really cool job. It's going to be uh, on billboards and all this kind of stuff. It's really great. And they're paying me really well. Really excited. I killed myself on it. And it's been like weeks and weeks. I asked my agent. He's like, "Oh yeah, it's like a 90-day thing." I'm like, "Jesus! Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> come on! I like killed myself for this thing. Yeah. How am I supposed to pay my rent? Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like..." And then so what ends up happening is I have like 20 or 30 jobs in a row, and I'm waiting to get paid for all of them. Oh wow! And it's just like, yeah, that's brutal. And then all of a sudden they come in. I'm like, yeah. 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 So it, it sounds yeah. like <laughs> what we need to do is hire some muscle for all the yeah. artists yeah. to go collect. <laughs> Start getting anybody, awesome. anybody out there, you know, yeah. buff who wants to go collect for and, all the and artists. You know, and you know yeah. what's funny? You, you know go. what's funny about it? When when you talk to like art directors about it, they're like, oh, we have nothing to do with it. Is it just the, yeah. the yeah, is a the accounting is a completely different thing? And it's like, wow, that's nice. You know, I, I literally killed myself, did a cover for you guys in less than two days, but. I, like they were supposed to. I got ripped off recently, um, where a few of my checks were stolen and like uh. fraud. Like they, they, there was the fraud was so bad that my agent had to close down his checking account because this person was copying my agent's checks, wow. and it was really bad. And so I didn't get paid for a long time for those jobs. But um, I was in. The, I was talking to one of the clients that owed me for two covers I did, and they're like, "Well, you know this whole fraud thing." And I was like, "I had nothing to do with mm -hmm. this. I painted your covers." I mean, at least you could like pay me for the work I did. So it's it's that kind of stuff is like That's, what yeah. irritates me because yeah. you work so hard for them, and and then they like all oh, the accountants are taking care of that. And you're yeah. like, Ugh. Mm. or or I'm gonna start emailing them pictures of my two year old. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> or you make a mistake in or they they get they 
don't give the right information for the invoices. And um, yeah. so they, they don't tell you. And then after 90 days, you're like, hey, I haven't been paid yet. What's <laughs> yeah. up with that? And you're like, yeah, you made a mistake. Mm. Um, so I ended up having to pay, having to wait nine months for my money. And I'm yeah. like, okay, you know, it's easier to have a child. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, yeah, I mean, it, it, you make so, more money too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just leave it. I mean, look, <laughs> this is the thing too, guys. Like you heard all of them talking about some of the issues that have come up, especially on the business side. And imagine if you're not moving in a direction that you like artistically, and then you have to deal with that on top of it. That's going to yeah. burn you out. Yeah. So one of the common themes I was hearing all of you talk about was sort of this moment where you where you did what you wanted to do, you know? And for you, it was really early. <laughs> You're like, I'm doing caricatures, you know? But even like the oils, like you'll probably find yourself, you're like, yeah. you know, getting in there and doing the, when the kids, I know the whole kids thing for sure oh, too, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but you know, you have to sort of naturally pursue your own, your own path and it has to be organic and it has to, has to work and, and you will hit, hit those trials and all that stuff and yeah, hire some muscle to, to collect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now I wanted to move on. I wanted to make sure because um, we're we're the time is is slowly eroding or f quickly eroding. I mean not slowly. Uh, I wanted to see if anybody had any questions. I wanted to make sure we got some of those before it was done. All right, I'm going to come to you. All right, Whoop. if I can get there. Here you go. Yeah, go for it. So um, I know I have a lot of other artist friends that kind of struggle with this on the topic of struggles. Do you guys give yourself each year like a deadline of how many like? pieces you guys want to pull out or is it just kind of like all right this year I'm going to do x amount um, and that's okay with me yep. do you like try you do? to push yourself no I don't give oh, myself I, a, I a deadline because it's you know whatever I like to do I do yeah. and however many that is and yeah. because I don't want to put myself under that um, stress mm -hmm. like I am having to perform which mm -hmm. takes a lot of uh, energy and it, it leads to burnout really quickly and I've been in a burnout and I can yeah, tell same. you that sucks yeah like like it, it it's not it's not fun you don't want to do that yeah. and um, so I'm not starting the year out like I'm gonna do this um, I did that with the fairies of the fold lines I was like okay I'll, I'll do a Kickstarter maybe I'll sell 300 books <laughs> And after 50, uh, 48 minutes after launch, I was completely funded. And I saw, you know, I had to do 700 sketches in books. I had to pack 2,000 books. And I did it all by myself. Oh, wow. wow. In two months. Oh, wow. wow. That's crazy. Yeah. It's a good job. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was, you know, and you see names as Tony Ditalizzi coming, passing by, and Guillermo del Toro. And you're like, yeah, nice. doing it. <laughs> but it's you know that was my deadline, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I didn't do any, not not a lot of work or art. And but next year I'm definitely you know I've got ideas. There's more books coming up. Mm -hmm. There's a theme park coming. I tell you, there's a theme <laughs> park coming. Nice. Yeah. So Dream big. Yeah. So just yeah. Real quick, just to add on that. So do you guys like put yourself on the like these like events like Inktober where? They do like a one ink every day. I don't. Oh, I'm so. doing that this oh, year. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No, I mean, I it's. I mean, that's that stuff is kind of fun. Yeah, it's but fun. But it's like I, you know, I. You don't let it weigh you down. I, I have deadlines. Yeah. yeah. I I can't do, like I do extra drawing for fun. Like mm -hmm. I'll sit in my living room when my kids are watching a movie and I'll sketch my iPad. But I just don't have time. Like. I mean, that would be fun to do. Yeah. I've, mm -hmm. I, I see it every year people do it. I'm like, oh, it'd be yeah. fun, but I don't have time to do that. Yeah. I mean, there's other things I, I should be doing, like yeah. uh, taking my kids to the park or something. So, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I just, I, I, I work all day long. Um, and I also, I started a podcast mm -hmm. this year. So nice. I'm like, yeah. I'm, that has taken up a ton of extra time. Oh. That what, what, What's the name of it so we yeah. can... Uh, okay. I actually had Iris on recently. Yep. It was awesome. Oh. So the podcast is called Face the Truth. And it's... Um, I think it's pretty cool. It's it's, it's I started uh, like in late December, so it's not even been a year yet. Um, I do one every week. Every week I have an artist. Um, I've had artists, musicians, poets, um, stand-up comedians, um, painters, sculptures, and it, it, every week it's just an, an, an artist that um, that I think is an awesome artist. And we just have a regular. There's no prep questions. It's just us just talking. Um, talk about what we're working on, what's going on, what's life like. Um, 
and it's been really cool. I've, I've, I've had some amazing people on that I couldn't believe it. Um, I have some people coming up soon. I'm going to be having the Black Keys on, which is crazy. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, I, I just wrote them, and they said, yeah. And I'm like, OK. Wow. Um, so yeah, so it's basically, it's, it's been getting you know growing and growing. And um, it's a lot of fun to do. It's usually like an hour. Some of them have gone two hours because the conversations were so good. Nice. Last week, I was on with Cesar Santos. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he's a, just a giant. He's an amazing oil painter. And you should watch that one because it's, it's super inspiring. He like, he's such a cool dude. You should watch um, them all, actually. Yeah, watch. There's, there's, I mean, well, right now, there's only 43. But, so I've been doing one a week since I started. Um, yeah, and I've got, I'm really into to stand-up comedy, and um, uh, I was able to get some pretty big comedians on, which was pretty awesome, and they actually are regulars at the comedy store, and so I got invited, I'm going to go to the comedy store uh, Monday, and hopefully they let me do a minute. <laughs> so, but it's really cool because it's open doors. I, I had a musician on, um, Sun Little, he's really amazing, uh, and when we got done talking, he's like, hey, you want to paint my, my el next album cover? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's been cool that way too. I've been, you know, making more friends and networking and, yeah. but yeah, check it out. It's on YouTube where you can watch it. I, I put a lot of time into editing things in there and trying to make it entertaining. And then it's also available on like all the other apps where you can listen. Um, unfortunately, not all of them are on the listening apps yet because of weird computer stuff, but, but most of them are there. <laughs> I would say just to answer that question very quickly. Um, I never have thought in terms of, at the end of the year, I need to have a certain number of pieces. Mm -hmm. But what I would say, I mean, just pragmatically for people trying to figure out how to make this life work, I mean, it comes down to what are your bills? Yeah. And, and for me, yeah. it's not even a matter of how many pieces or how much money do I need to make to make those bills. It's more just a thing of, like, you know how much you need to make mm -hmm. bills-wise, and it's how many pieces can I do? How many jobs do I need to fulfill that? And the question that'll come up, or the, the issue that'll come up very quickly for you guys is, how many of those am I loving? How many of those am I loving yeah. for whatever yeah. reason, whether it be yeah. because it's a billboard, mm -hmm. uh, but yet it's still painful, or whether it be something where it's a bucket list item, or whether it's something that just has a, a, a combination of variables mm -hmm. that please you and are gratifying for you, and, and trying to line up as many of those as possible t in order to cover your bills, that's the magic equation. It's not yeah. worrying about trying to have a certain number by the end of the year. Yeah. It's really about yeah. how am it, I making these, break it down into pieces is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Yeah. Don't try to bite off these big yeah. chunks of challenge. You gotta break those challenges into smaller bites. And so that monthly bite is better than that yearly bite. So that mm -hmm. yeah, would be definitely. my piece of advice. Well, next, for, next yeah. as, for, as a gallery artist, I actually do know how many I'm supposed to paint yeah. because I'm scheduled up until 2020, what mm -hmm. year is it? 2022 mm -hmm. for galleries. So, and they'll tell me like how many pieces they need. Um, so I know in advance how many I'm supposed to create and I always do it last minute because that's the life of an artist. You procrastinate. <laughs> oh yeah. You're just like, I, I have so many paintings to do. Yeah, and I ha I'm like, yeah. And I'm telling people and they're like, aren't you worried? They're oils. I'm like, um, now I'm worried. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but like, I, so I know, but then I have, and I know how many books I have. And so I know how many pages I have to do. But goddamn, I always have to say yes to like <laughs> projects that pop up and like, yeah. you know. And how do you say no to That's when you know Disney too. knocks on your door? You're like, um, no. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And then so then you just add in and you add in. And my problem is that I just um, I don't have any time for myself really, because I, I work so much. And then I do things for fun, like when I go to a show like New York or San Diego, and I'll have a little mini gallery where I'll paint like, you know. Deadpool as a bee. And so that's how I get away with doing like fun little things for myself so it still keeps it fresh. But I can't tell you how many of those I'll paint. It's just whatever I'm feeling or how mm. much sugar I've had that day. <laughs> um, yeah, but as a gallery artist, you, you definitely know how many. But like yeah. always, okay. always give yourself buffer time for extra things that'll come along. Okay. Yeah. And even then, yeah. buffer time is so difficult to, to do because I'm when I get back home, I have like three weeks to, to finish two books, yeah. uh, do one magic card, uh, and finish a couple of more paintings for a show in uh, Iluxcon, which is next month in mm -hmm. the USA, and Farrycon. And in between, I'm thinking, oh, I'm liking this sculpting so very much. Let's do another one. So, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> no sleep till book. No, there's no sleep at oh, all. I'm no, like, but you know, but like you, you said, fun, you right? can't say no to. I can't say no to no. magic. I, I, I didn't go out and and said, hey, here's my portfolio. They rang me. Yeah. 
how can I say no? It's mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that, you know. And if yeah. I don't like it, I don't have to say yes next time. So it's just <laughs> trying well, it's, new things. What's funny, too, is like the same thing. It's like I, I am so busy sometimes and so exhausted, and I don't want to take on a job that someone's calling me, but the other jobs that I've that I'm waiting for them to pay me, I'm like, well, I better take this one. Oh yeah. So right. I end up I end up in like a cycle of like, yeah. like dance monkey dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you know what it's bre- like crazy. You know what breaks my heart is that we work so when you work so hard and then they don't actually publish what you've done. Like oh, I've worked yeah. for Hasbro and Disney and WizKids and like I've slaved for it and I can't even talk about it and then they're like, Yeah, we're just gonna shelve it for now. Yeah. I'm like I have a Time, a like, time magazine. <laughs> I'll describe it. They hired me to do this cover, and I was so excited and so proud of it. Yeah. It was the, the elephant leg was friggin' crazy. It took forever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I posed my father-in-law for Trump because he's, like, oh, literally yeah. the exact height and weight and everything. <laughs> and he has a suit with a red tie. I'm like, this is perfect. So, um, And I don't have a close-up, I don't think, of the face, but it's, you know, there's a lot of detail. I was so proud. What was the client? Um, what was what? Time. Time. Oh, it's just time. Yeah, it's time. It's supposed to be a cup for a cover? Yeah. Oh, and, man. And uh, I've done a few covers for them now, but this one, I was, like, so excited because every cover I've done has been, like, for the person of the year type thing, and this was going to be my first non, like, actual just regular time of we- weekly thing. And it didn't come out, and he goes, oh, yeah, a different story came up, but, but you know, this, this is topical. It'll, I mean, it's been two years now, and I'm oh. like... You know, isn't Trump still trying to get the Republican Party to move? Like, <laughs> it's so, still applicable, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so maybe it'll, if you see it come out, then you'll be like, yeah. Well, I'll cheer when it comes yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I, I think we have time. Does anybody else? Okay, yeah. Jason mentioned um, his agent at one point, and I was curious if all of you have agents and what your feelings are on representation. Never had an agent for art. Never no. had an agent. But I will say this. So there's going to be a panel tomorrow on artist authors, and I'll be uh, actually moderating that one according to the schedule. Um, <laughs> and um, that's an important movement that's happening right now with our field, where there's more and more visual artists owning their own intellectual properties, telling their own stories. And I would say for people who are moving into that milieu uh, or are in that milieu, you, you got to have representation. Because when you're dealing with a story property that you're creating or co-creating, uh, you better have some representation to navigate those waters. But as, an art, as a visual artist, per se, a gun for hire, it's not necessary. It's not, it's not you have to have it. Um, um, there may be people who have differing views on that. I'll open it up to you guys, but I've never had it. And, and I'll just say the last thing I'll say on that is, for me, it was about having those relationships with those art directors, with those publishers, with those editors, even with those authors that I was doing book covers. Uh, those mattered. And in the dark times, those, those relationships really matter. So if it's just an agent representing me. I'm kind of a faceless entity. I'm just, it's just my work. But because they kind of know me, there's, a, there's a, a, another level of trust in there and bond and humanness, you know, and I think that does help. So I'll pass it on. Anybody yeah. else? Yeah, I, I've, I've never had an agent and I don't even have an agent for my intellectual property. Mm-hmm. Like for fairies or for fault lines, I don't have an agent. I do it all myself. They're going to come, I would say. Uh, and then you yeah. get to pick and I, you get I've to decide. Had, yeah. I've, I've had some people interested, but they don't get me. Well, that's the thing. I think we talked about this yesterday, and I will say this to, to you guys. I said this to her. you got to have somebody who's going to champion. Your agent should be somebody that champions your work, not just interested in just selling it. Yeah. They have yeah. to champion it. And, and she's already had an experience where that person wasn't there to champion the work. He was just oh. they, they were just there to enter into the marketplace in the way that they envisioned the marketplace. And yeah. she's a singular visionary, and that oh. she needs to be treated as such. And that person didn't do it. So. I, I can tell you a short a short, um, so I found a, a, a publisher who is going to publish a trade edition of my book. So it's this artist edition is almost sold out. Um, so that's the one to get. get me one. <laughs> I will give you money. But there's going to be a trade edition. But I, I had a major publisher interested, which was like, oh my God, this is the dream. Um, and then they said to me, but we need to change the whole idea. <laughs> And those stories, you need to work with an, uh, a writer yeah. who's going to write your stories. And I'm like, yeah, but... Ruin your stories, right? Yeah. Ruin yeah. it. Yeah. They basically wanted a Spiderwick 2.0 or whatever. 
And I felt gutted. I mm. I mean, I was physically ill. I cried. I mm. felt so bad. Because on the one hand, this is your chance. I mean, this was one of the biggest publishers out there. This could have been, you know, my name on billboards or whatever on movie screens. And I, yeah, you know, but if I say yes to this, it is lost forever. That's right. Yeah. It is lost to me forever. And then Brian told me, he said, no, it's perfect. Just follow your, your heart. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Brian lo loves fairies. And he said, trust in the fairies. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I've got a story very similar to that. I'll just make it very quick. So how many of you guys have seen the Loteria stuff that I'm doing lately, the posters and cards? If you haven't, come check out my table, 423. I'm basically taking the old Mexican bingo imagery, and I'm redoing it completely in, in a science fiction fantasy idiom. So there was one of the biggest book publishers on the planet was ready to do a book deal for this, and they wanted the game rights as well. Okay. Well, they gave me a decent advance on the book, but the game rights, it was, it was just complete garbage. It was basically zero. And I, this was my chance to basically be a published artist author. And so the reason I'm going to say this story to you guys is the power of no is a very important thing. But it hurts when you do it, when your dream is right there. Yeah. And that was me about to become a published artist author. Um, and I said no, and it really hurt, and oh, it still yeah. does. And mm -hmm. so I'm still not a published artist author. It was because I basically took that no and revamped my pitch completely, and I'm in the process now of getting ready to repitch mm -hmm. it. And I know now we're going to have more than just that one mass massive publisher that's going to want it. It'll be better, but at the time it hurts. And I will say for you guys out there, those no's are really important, not just yeah. for you, but for your culture for the culture of the field, yeah. and you have to be strong in those moments, and those are tough ones. It, yeah. tough it is ones. hard to say no, yeah. you know? It's, uh, it's I had, I had a, Yeah, like I, I had a publisher who did a book um, called Burn, and it was my self-published, or oh, creator-owned book, and I had a movie company that wanted to make a movie out of it. I'm like, yes, I've made it, I'm gonna make a movie. And then they kept, not, like, the only thing they kept the same was the name. And they literally changed all the characters. They're like, this is, uh, it was about a cyborg boy who was attacked by a machine and it turned him into like a, a battery. And they're like, okay, now he's going to be born from an eggplant. And he's going to be full cyborg. And I'm like, what? And now his name, Burn, was an acronym. And I'm like, what are you talking? And they're like, biological, whatever. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And um, so I, I said no, because that's not what I wanted. Um, I, I'm... But I didn't have an agent at the time. I don't have an agent now. I did, though, in the beginning, when I, um, as, a, as a gallery artist, I had a, fan, um, a collector of mine who really liked my work. And he's like, you know, I want to represent you in Los Angeles, in California, because you're not shown here, so let's get you in. And in the beginning, it was really good, but it turned pretty sour quickly because mm -hmm. I'd never met him in person. And uh, yeah, that's, you yeah, always meet mm -hmm. people in person um, because I was getting emails and phone calls from galleries saying like, this is he really your agent and he's not actually a really nice guy. And I was hearing all these things uh, that wasn't really good. I mean, I, I always, I'm thankful that he brought me into Los Angeles, but at the same time, I really didn't like how he was representing me and he wanted to take ownership too mm -hmm. about what I was doing. And I'm like, you know, no. And so when I quit him, he actually called me evil and I'm like, oh. Well, I am, but that's not what makes me evil. Take that as a compliment. Yeah. No, exactly. Take that as yeah. your compliment. But I do, I do want to say, like, if you guys, you don't need an agent necessarily, but always read, have a contract. Like, um, have a contract and make sure you get paid half up front. That's how I always work. And then make sure you get paid um, after you've completed the work. And yeah. just read a contract. And if you guys can't read contracts, hire a lawyer or yeah. find someone you trust that can actually understand legalese because it is, it is literally Greek to me. So and about the contract, it's yeah. okay to ask for revisions. It's okay yeah. to ask because the deal I mm -hmm. managed to get with my publisher, I retain all my merchandising rights. I retain all control of creative control. It is my book still. They're just publishing it. Mm -hmm. They're just distributing it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's me doing the thing. And you can ask for that. It's just, you know... Yeah, you always have to get revision. Yes, you yeah, have you to get like you don't you don't it. sign away like yeah. uh, they take ninety percent and you take ten. Hell no, <laughs> hell, 
hell no. Yeah. So I, I retain my movie rights. So, you know, yeah. who knows? Yeah. Movies, animation. <laughs> Just don't go with the company I did. <laughs> nah. Yeah. You know how much work <laughs> you put into <laughs> it. Kidding. So even if they don't recognize it, you know what it's worth, you know, yeah. and, re- and be strong in that. Yeah. yeah. And like you yeah, said, exactly. it even goes um, beyond that for the culture as well, for everyone else. And believe, you know. in, your, believe in your art, but yeah. respect your art, respect yourself. Yeah. Yeah, Take awesome. yourself serious. And um, everybody's here like, uh, I'm not professional. Yes, if you're an artist, you're professional. At the, yeah. s- the moment That's, yeah. you're saying yeah. like, I'm an artist, right. own that. Like mm-hmm. own, just say you're a professional. Yeah. You're yeah. all professionals. You're all doing this. Your only mm-hmm. goal, the, the only difference is we've done this a couple more years perhaps. <laughs> yeah. And we had a, a break. Um, we met some people. The fact that you're here, actually going out, going out to portfolio reviews, you're already winning. So good on you. Well, guys, I think that's a perfect way to uh, to end. Thank you guys so much. Uh, fantastic answers, and thank you guys for your attentiveness. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs>